Welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. It's a Friday in the fifth week of Easter. Uh, we are broadcasting locally on 99.9 FM, our Mount Olive Lutheran Emergency Broadcast Network uh, in low power FM, also recording for YouTube and glad to welcome you. The order of service in, in Matins is printed in full in, in the bulletin. That bulletin is also available uh, below the link on YouTube. I'll also announce the hymns if you're following along with your own hymnals. The opening hymn, 869, Will the Lord Begin Your Task?
The Order of Matins, page 219. O oh Lord, open my lips. Delight in it. Oh. 
looking at worthless things, and give me life in your ways. And he answered them, 
Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then, if I should, it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Now, while, now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are free from your disability. And he laid ha his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at the glorious things that were done by him. He said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like, and to what shall I compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his garden, and it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. He went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will tell you, he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We join the responsory for Easter, page 222. Sing to the Lord and bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Confessing together our Christian faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear Christian friends, well, I'd like reading from Luke 13, there was an important incident raised to Jesus. It is a question that is constantly being asked, even to this day. Why do bad things happen? Why does God allow bad things to take place? Why did God allow those Galileans to be murdered, even while they were doing their religious sacrifices? Were they sinners? Did they deserve it? Jesus points out rather that people, instead of trying to judge the reasons why, should use that as an opportunity, a call to repentance. Repent! What does that word mean? And actually, in the scriptures, you need to be careful because the word repentance or repent is used in several different ways. Sometimes it's used in a narrow sense to specifically acknowledge sins and be sorry for them and to stop doing them. And of course, that awareness of the need for repentance and the call for repentance can come from the law of God, the, the commandments. But knowing that is not necessary, is not enough to be saved, and it is not what is sometimes even described as repentance in the scriptures, because sometimes it's used, that word is used in a wider sense. A wide, it's used as a wider understanding of not just recognizing sin, but also of a person's whole conversion, of acknowledging the sin, but also of faith and trust in Jesus our Savior. And Jesus actually, in response to that, uh, that question about the Galileans, added another event. A tower falling over and killing 18 people. Kind of a random thing. But why did God allow that to happen? Again, we shouldn't use that opportunity to pass human judgment on others, but rather to, 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 uh, to uh, examine ourselves and to uh, come to further repentance and trust in God. I never even noticed this until I was preparing the sermon, but the very next parable of Jesus is not something detached, but actually follows along with what Jesus was, was saying before, this parable of the vine vineyard and the vine dresser. Jesus tells a parable which utilizes images that his hearers would have immediately understood from their Old Testament prophets. The image of a vineyard, a vineyard and a fig tree are images of God's people, the people of Israel, the people that God had called to himself. But in this parable, the vineyard was not, the, the fig tree was not bearing fruit. And what fruit was that? John the Baptist called people, reminded them to bear fruits of repentance because God's patience did have a limit. And Jesus says, evaluate yourselves. Are you bearing fruit? There is still time. The vineyard is still standing. The vine dresser pleads for more time. Even after three years of no fruit, the owner says, cut the... After three years, the owner says, cut the, cut the tree down. But the vine dresser begs to be allowed to dig around the tree and put on manure because maybe there will be repentance. Jesus brings hard times that cause us to repent, to turn away from sin, and to, in the wider sense, turn to God and bear fruits of repentance. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. But the time of perishing has not yet come. There is still time today. 
as long as there is a day called today, turn to God, trust in Him. Uh, there is still, there is still time. Jesus pointed out later in that reading also, um, now there is time. Now, now you, you can still come to Christ. That's, somebody was, I was talking to somebody yesterday about, about how, you know, after 9-11, the events that took place those many years ago, it seemed like there was an immediate return to God, but how long did that last? For many people, that high repentance and trust of, of full churches tended to be short. Wonder if this will be similar as we begin to again gather together as God's people in churches. Will that time be short? Or will there be a more widespread repentance and trust in God's forgiveness? The gospel of the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus is for all people. Jesus points that out. The gospel offers a hope and comfort even when God's justice remains hidden. We don't always see that in a world facing sin and suffering and death. But the, God's call is clear. Flee through repentance into the kingdom that comes through Jesus' own person, through his incarnation, crucifixion, his resurrection, and ascension. Forgiveness of sins is present in that one risen from the dead, Jesus Christ, the one who remains present with his church. I am with you always. He remains present through the proclamation of God's word and through the administration of the sacraments. We look forward to that, both the gathering of church again, but also we look forward to that in eternity when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise and join in singing the song of joy and response of Te Deum. We praise you, O God. Uh, it's on page 223 in your hymnals.
prepare the tune of 957.